Morning, everybody. Morning. Can you hear me, first of all? Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful, warm welcome, as ever. Genuinely, it's a lovely, warm welcome here from Grace Church. Always it feels like family. So, so thank you so much. Thank you, Paul and Chaz, for the beautiful uh, worship. And thank you so much for your support for Mary's Wheels over the last year. I'll talk a bit more uh, about Mary's Wheels in a bit. Um, but for your, your ongoing support, so last year, uh, through your, your generous donations, more than 100 children will have had a school meal for a whole school year because of your generosity, so that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. But also for your prayer, I think when Katie asked me for some prayer points when you had your, was it an all-night prayer? Yeah. yeah. I think I gave you like a quite an extensive <laughs> list of things that we wanted prayer for. So thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate you standing with us in your like generosity uh, of provision, but also just for standing with us in prayer in some really tricky situations. Uh, so thank you. Uh, it's lovely to be back on Harvest Again. I feel like this is just a, an annual booking now, so uh, I'll put it in the diary for next year. Um, it's really great to be back. And um, I think, as I love, Terry just said, a, a harvest kind of thing. <laughs> Which kind of is, isn't it? Because I don't think it's an official harvest service unless you've sung I Plough the Field. <laughs> uh, maybe afterwards we could do that. Kind, a kind of harvest service. And I, I, if you remember last year, I said I'm not from that kind of Church of England uh, background where we have the whole like you know beautiful loaves of bread and all the local produce but harvest is that time for us to do two things to to thank God uh, for his provision in our lives to take that time to reflect to look at, uh, on what he's done for us and, and be thankful first of all uh, but secondly uh, to to think about those who have less than us and we've done that in a really local context um, as we've just heard but also globally, just taking that time to think and consider uh, people who, who don't have as much as we have, who aren't as fortunate. So we're going to do that today. Um, we're going to spend some time thanking God for his provision for us in our lives and also uh, look a bit further afield uh, and, and think and reflect on that. We are going to, if you could click the next slide, please. Nothing's going to happen. That's fine. That's, that's fine. We don't need technology. Um, we're going to think, uh, we're going to think today, thank you, about miraculous feeding. No guesses uh, what, what story we might be looking at today. We're going we're gonna to look briefly at, at that really uh, familiar passage where Jesus feeds the 5,000, or however many it is, depending on what, which gospel you look at. And we're going to think about that uh, miraculous feeding and just think about the ways that that kind of weaves its way through, through our lives in terms of Jesus' provision for us. So we're going to read that together. Uh, the version we're going to read, next slide please, is thank you very much, is John 6, uh, 1 to 15. I'm going to read it, so don't feel like you have to like, get your Bibles or whatever, just, just follow along and, and listen to this very, very familiar passage. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, 
gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into, who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So like I said, a very familiar story. I'm not going to go like, into it in too much detail today, but I just want to look at three threads that weave themselves, I think, through that story and then think about how that fits into our, our own lives. So next slide, please. Thank you very much. So the three threads that I'm going to focus on this morning are, uh, first of all, uh, there's a need. So seeing the need and, and being kind of moved by compassion by the need that's seen. Secondly, the generosity of people. And then thirdly, the miraculous provision of Jesus. So first of all, we see that Jesus sees that there's a need. In this particular scenario, the need was food. People were hungry. It was as simple as that. The need was food. And Jesus saw the need. It doesn't say in this instance, but we read time and time again through scripture. that when Jesus sees a need, he's moved with compassion. It's one of my favorite um, kind of phrases in the Bible. Jesus moved with compassion. Jesus while he was here on earth, saw a need, whether that was individuals or groups, saw a need and was moved with compassion. He always did things in response to compassion. And I think we see this in the story. The need was hunger and Jesus saw the need and was moved uh, and wanted to do that. Uh, here, like I said, it was hunger, but we can read various accounts of Jesus being moved by compassion. Sometimes it was sickness and the need was healing. Sometimes it was a need for forgiveness, for grace, for mercy. Jesus sees a need and is moved with compassion. But then the next thing is the generosity of people. In this instance, it was a young lad with his packed lunch. He had a little bit of bread and some fish. And he probably thought that that was not a particularly uh, like great gift to be given. Um, but there was generosity there on his part. He gave his lunch to Jesus, uh, an act of generosity by that young lad. I don't know if you know many teenage boys, but I'm, sure, I'm not sure many of them would give up their, their packed lunch. Um, but then the miraculous thing was that Jesus took that gift that had generously been given and he miraculously um, provided. There was multiplication. And that part of the story only Jesus could do. People can be generous. We know that, can't we? We've seen that in our own lives. We've seen generosity of people, but it was only Jesus that could do the miraculous and multiply that food so that it could feed those 5,000 plus and there still be room afterwards. So we see those three threads and I think they work, they weave themselves through this story, but I think we see that in other stories in scripture. There's a need uh, and there's a compassion and then we see generous people giving and then Jesus doing the, the, the cool kind of miraculous stuff to see that need met. I want us to reflect uh, on those three kind of threads in our own lives because for sure we have all been in a place of need in some point in our lives maybe lots of times, maybe numerous times, maybe today. Maybe the need is hunger. Maybe it is like as, as real as that. Maybe we've, we're just hungry, we're in need of provision. Maybe we're sick. Maybe we just need forgiveness. Whatever the need is, we've all had that in our lives, haven't we? We've all had mo moments where there's been a need and we've needed somebody to look on us with compassion, whatever that need is. But then I hope that in those stories, wherever we've seen that need in our own lives, we've seen, I hope, the generosity of people. I'm sure you've seen it in this church because I know 
that is a generous church. You are a generous people. And where there's been need, I hope that in your lives and in my life, we've seen generosity of people coming along, alongside us, seeing a need, we move with compassion and being generous. And then I'm sure we've all seen the miraculous provision of Jesus in our lives, the stuff that only Jesus can do. Like people are generous and it's cool, but Jesus does the miraculous. Jesus is the one who's able to multiply things. And if you've been in church for more than like a week, you'll know of stories where people have been like, no, I had that exact need and it came through. And whatever that was, you know that it could only have been like the miraculous provision of Jesus. Like people's generosity is cool and it goes up to a certain point, but sometimes like it's only the miraculous provision of Jesus. Maybe it's not been you that's in need. Maybe you've been the one who's, who's seen a need. You've seen a need somewhere in your community, in your school, in your workplace, whatever it is, and been moved by compassion. Maybe you've been the one who's been generous and seen God miraculously move. And I think harvest is a great time for us to reflect on that. Where have we seen like generosity of people in our lives? Where have we seen that? And can we thank God for that? And where have we seen the miraculous provision, the stuff that only he can do, the stuff that like you can't answer with, with kind of human answers? Where have we seen the miraculous provision of Jesus? Because certainly these three threads have woven themselves through the Mary's Meal story, as you, as you heard last year. Mary's Meals began because of a need. Uh, our, our founder, Magnus, who I'll talk about and hopefully you'll see later, he saw a need. Like the need that he saw 22 years ago was that lad, Edward, that I told you about last year, who said, I just want, I just want enough food to eat and one day have the opportunity to go to school. Like that was the need that he saw and he, was, he responded with compassion. Then, of course, we saw like the generosity of people. Like that's been the thread that's been throughout our story at Mary's Mills. Generosity of people, people giving sacrificially. Small gifts, huge gifts, but always generously. And then, of course, we've seen the miraculous provision of Jesus. Like absolutely. Like Magnus could start, to, well, probably could stand here and tell you countless stories where it's only been like the multiplication that Jesus can do, the, the miraculous provision uh, that he has done. And that's why in, in 22 years, we've gone from feeding 200 children in one school to now feeding uh, just over 2.4 million children. Like that's miraculous provision of Jesus, there's nothing else. Of course, it's the generosity of people. Um, but it is, and we put that down to the miraculous provision of Jesus. So maybe, you know, as we go into the next week, my encouragement would be like to spend some time thinking about that, those three threads and, and thanking God for the gener generosity of people in your life and his miraculous provision. We're gonna, I'm going to talk to you briefly about a situation that's been quite kind of live for us over the, the past year with Mary's Meals. And um, it's kind of hard to hear, but actually, we see the goodness of God in it, and we see the generosity of people in it, and we see the miraculous provision of Jesus in it. But I'm just kind of assuming that many of you were here last year. Uh, but for those of you who weren't, I'm just gonna give a brief kind of intro to Mary's Mills. Is that, is that okay? Could you pop on the next slide, please? Mary's Mills is, what I love about it, is that it's really simple. Like we aim to do one thing, and do that one thing really well. We don't, we don't meet like loads of complex needs. We do one thing, we, we, we do that one thing um, really well. Next slide, if that's okay. Uh, our vision, as you can see, and as you know, is that every child has a meal a day in their place of education. The importance of that meal being in school, as I said last year, is that it's a powerful incentive to get children into school where we believe and we hope that they will receive an education that will be the ladder out of poverty for them, their families and their communities. So the importance of that meal being in school is that it encourages children into school. But once they're there and they've had that hot meal, they then have the energy they need to learn and to grow and to play and to do all those things which they couldn't do with an empty stomach. You know, these kids are coming from homes where there's no food, 
much of the time. Long walk to school. No food. Like, we all know we can't learn like that. We know from our own experience. And the second part of our vision is that those of us, and myself included, who have more than we need, like, have the opportunity to share. Like, that's a wonderful thing, that we have the opportunity to share with those who lack even the most basic of things. So that's what we do in a nutshell. And like I said before, if you could skip to the next one, please. Like, the joy for us is that we can feed um, more than 2.4 million children every single school day across 17 uh, countries across the world. And that's incredible. And like I said, that's, that's a miraculous uh, provision of Jesus. Um, and it's something we celebrate and thank God for. But it is just a tiny amount because 67 million primary school age children are outside of school at the moment because of hunger and poverty. So we've still got lots of work to do. There's still a long way to go. What I'd like to do now is just uh, briefly tell you about something we've been working on, especially this year, um, which is Ethiopia. If you could go on to the next slide first. So just to give a little bit of context, Mary's Mills have been uh, working in Ethiopia since 2017. And we work in um, the northern area of Ethiopia, which is called Tigray. And it's a, a place of immense need. Those of you, um, I don't remember because I'm too young, um, but 40 years ago, Ethiopia was, I'm not that young, it's not, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> 40 years ago, Ethiopia was in the headlines. It was what everybody was talking about. Uh, and we saw, uh, you know, things like Band-Aid. Uh, it, was, it was the big need, wasn't it? And, and the, some of the areas, one of the areas that was focused on 40 years ago was the area of Tigray in, in northern Ethiopia. So um, at the beginning of this year, we were feeding uh, 24,000 children in Tigray. Now, Tigray at the moment has just experienced two years of civil war, which has left thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, of people dead. Um, and alongside that, there's the, the issue of a lack of harvest, which we've been talking about today. There's been two years where there's been no rains. And so the harvests have, have just failed. So there's just literally no food. There's just nothing. And so um, those two things combined, the conflict thankfully now ended, um, has brought one level of, of need. And then the lack of rains has, has meant a whole different area of, of need. And, and the need in, in Ethiopia is, is really stark, has been really stark. Um, Magnus um, has been out there. No foreign journalists, by the way, are allowed into Ethiopia. The government don't want people to see what's happening. And so it's really hard. And you know, I don't know if you've heard about Ethiopia in the news, probably not. And I guess there are some reasons for that. You know, there's been a lot going on and there's an element of like, can we even take any more bad news, right? You know, with, with Gaza, uh, with Ukraine, like there's a lot going on. And, but the news about Ethiopia has just not been getting through. No journalists allowed. Magnus was able to go out there because we have a, a project partner that we work with. So um, hopefully we're gonna just hear a little bit from Magnus about the need if this works, let's see. Isaac says, press so play. Here, here we are in Ethiopia. <laughs> we have today the estimated 20 million people out of a population of 2 million. Um, other countries in the world. Um, the need is particularly acute here in Ethiopia, but there's also um, just suffered this appalling war. Estimates say that as many as 600,000 people 
also like that war. So many people still displaced. And if that's not hard enough, the people here are now enduring this terrible threat. A lot of people have plant their, their fields. Um, most of them failed to stay. So there's this terrible hunger looming, there's this terrible fear. There's people talking about this potentially being worse than the infamous uh, famine of the early 1980s. The whole world rallied around. Um, so I, I can hardly think of other context in which these meals would be more decimated. Students who go to school like this one that I'm speaking to that are without school meals, where so many children are hardly talking about what is happening. So the need for these things to go here is strong. Thank you, tech gurus. Um, I think I showed that video because, like, sometimes it's just good to see. Right. Well, I think when you see how, how stark that landscape is, it kind of puts a few things into context for us, you know, sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, there's no food in the house. And yet you can see there, there's literally no harvest. There's been no rains. There's drought. Um, and we work with um, a partner organization called the, the Daughters of Charity, who are the most beautiful people you'll ever ever know, but the, the, the leader of that organization is Sister Medhin. She's um, a nun, a sister, and during the Civil War, her, the, the male members of her family were, were taken out and she watched them being shot. Her family just was wiped out like that in the, in the Civil War, and yet she has the most beautiful heart. And you'll see her with the children in Ethiopia, and she She's just a beautiful, beautiful person. But to come back from such a, like, such a real, you know, tragedy, you know, we, we know that war affects people, but it was her family shot in front of her. And yet she gives now with such compassion and she works alongside those children. And her plea was to us and to Magnus, you know, you've got to tell people what's happening here, you know, in Tigray alone, 4.5 million people are at risk of starvation. Like it's, it's, it's like Magna said, it's, it has the potential of being worse than that crisis 40 years ago. But there, like I said, we've, we've seen the generosity of people and the miraculous provision of Jesus, even this year. Uh, so Magnus was out in Ethiopia at the, the start of the year and, um, we put out an, an emergency appeal um, and people responded incredibly, incredibly generously. Uh, if you can put the next slide on, uh, please, yeah. So as of September, we're now, that, that, that figure of children that have been fed by Mary's Mills has gone from 24,000 to 111,000 children, which is incredible. Like I said, that is the miraculous provision of Jesus. Yes, people have been generous, but Jesus has been so, good to us and to Mary's meals over the past the past year. So I think, next slide please. Um, yeah, I guess just to kind of leave us um, with those kind of three thoughts as we, as we uh, wrap up, I don't know. Um, at this time of harvest, when we think about the, the goodness of God in our lives and we think about others, my encouragement to myself and to you is um, let's spend some time today and the next week looking back on our own lives where we've seen a need and where we've seen the generosity of people. I know I've been in that situation countless times and I've seen the generosity of people and seen the miraculous provision of Jesus. And let's spend some time Thanking God. Like that's what a harvest is all about, isn't it? Thanking God for what he has done. And as we do that, to remember Sister Medhin in Ethiopia and the Daughters of Charity, pray for them. Um, really tough situation to be working in. Um, there's, there's some beautiful stories, like there were children who'd got into school because there was Mary's Mills there. And, and the children were sharing their meals with 
children who weren't able to come to school. Um, and the generosity of people in, in the worst circumstances. Sorry. Um, Lynn's like, this is standard more behavior. They, they cry. <laughs> the Moors cry, we cry. Yeah, that's how it is. Um, so just to kind of end on a, on a, on a um, more upbeat note, I'd love to talk to you some more about Mary's Meals. I'll be here afterwards and I'd like to share um, some information with you. If you didn't get this book last year, I would like to read it. I have plenty of copies. Has this anybody read this? Hey, excellent, good. <laughs> if you'd like to read this, it's just the most beautiful, inspirational book, which charts the story of Mary's Mills from way back before it, um, it was Mary's Mills as we know it. And there's just some stories in here, which actually nicely kind of fit in with that theme. This is a book full of stories of the generosity of people and the miraculous provision of Jesus, like jam-packed full of just beautiful stories. So if you'd like a copy, um, I'll just take a donation for a book, but just take one if you need one. And yeah, with all that to say, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Like I genuinely feel like you've really taken Mary's Meals into your heart, and I really thank you for that. And like I said, thank you, because, because of your giving over the last year, more than 100 children have had a hot meal in their school every single school day. And for that, we just say thank you so very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.